Hello and welcome to this video on how to run the bootstrap likelihood ratio difference test for determining the number of classes in latent class analysis, latent profile analysis and other type of mixture analysis in the M plus software. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually present an analysis in the M plus software and on Thursdays I talk about more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level modeling and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional free resources, including a link to my weekly statistics newsletter, as well as free courses that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to show you how you can run a bootstrap likelihood ratio difference test to determine the number of classes in mixture modeling, for example, latent class analysis, latent profile analysis, factor mixture modeling, growth mixture modeling, and so on. This option in, uh, is implemented in M plus as the tech 14 output option. You can see that here in my syntax that I specified tech 14 as a subcommand in my output option or output command. And in this case, I'm actually running a growth mixture model. But the principle for this would be the same if you had a latent profile analysis or a classical latent class analysis with categorical indicators. You would specify all this in exactly the same way. Now, the tech 14 command comes in conjunction with or is specified and used in conjunction with other commands here in the analysis command. You can see that in the analysis command I have a subcommand that says LRT bootstrap equals 500. So this specifies the number of bootstrap samples to be drawn by M+. This is a parametric bootstrap procedure to obtain an empirical p-value for the likelihood ratio difference test for determining the number of classes. And so the LRT bootstrap equals 500 specifies the number of bootstrap samples. In this case, I chose 500. You might decide that you need more, maybe a thousand or however many you think are necessary. And then also I included the LRT starts command here. I actually didn't put an equal sign, um, which worked. So I just forgot to type the equal sign and plus still took this command. So it, it sh seems like you don't need it, but normally you would for each subcommand also have this equal sign here. So LRT starts equals 120, 120. And what that means is that M plus when drawing the different class models will use an increased number of random starting values for each bootstrap draw when fitting the model to each bootstrap sample so that we can be sure that we will not end up with a local maximum solution for any of these bootstrap draws so that we can get a valid solution. And this is the exact same specification that I used for the actual analysis as well. So here in the starts command, this is what we would use to increase the number of starting value sets for our actual model that is fit to the actual data. And then the same specification here is used for the LRT bootstrap test for those for fitting the K class model and the K minus one class model so that we also have a sufficient number of starts for that. If you want to know or learn more about the starting value issue, you can check out my other videos on local maxima and latent class analysis on this channel in which I explain this in more detail how this works with the start setting in M plus. Now, in this case here, you can see this is a two class model. The classes option here is specified in conjunction with type equals mixture. So we're extracting two classes. And so then the bootstrap test here will automatically be for the comparison of a two class model to the single class model. So it's always the K class model against the K minus one class model. So M plus will perform a comparison a significance test for comparing the fit of the two class model against the fit of a single class growth model. In this case, it's a linear growth model. And so here you can see that the loadings are fixed on those on the slope factor to be zero, one, two, and three, indicating that this was an equally spaced 
um, that, that there were equally spaced time intervals here for a linear growth curve model and so we're fitting a two-class growth mixture model and right now we're comparing this two-class growth mixture model against a single class standard linear growth curve model to see if a two-class model fits better than a single class model. So that happens with the bootstrap test. So let's take a look at where we find the output for this LRT bootstrap test when we scroll all the way down to the M plus output file. In the M plus output file at the very bottom we obtain the technical 14 output and here you can see the random start specification for estimating the K minus one class model was increased to 120 so the initial stage random starts were increased to 100 the final stage starting values were set at 20 that's higher than what m plus would use by default and so in this case this may not be necessary because the k minus one class model is the single class model and so we shouldn't have a problem with local maxima really for a single class model but just to be on the safe side, I increased the random starts here with the LRT starts option. You can see that this is here also given for the generated data and then here for the K class model for generated data. So for all these analyses, we use that same random start specification and we requested 500 bootstrap samples as you can see here and so successful successfully executed were actually 500 so that's important to check that all of these bootstrap samples actually were completed you can compare the number here successful bootstrap draws to number of bootstrap draws requested and you can see all 500 were properly executed there's no warning message or error message here and so we can interpret this the results of that parametric bootstrapped likelihood ratio test for one classes versus or one class versus two classes the one class solution here is the one that's um, assumed to be the true model under the null hypothesis and so um, the two class model um, then so if the one class model is rejected then we would say the two class model is better than the one class model and you can see that the null hypothesis here can be rejected because the approximate p-value for this null hypothesis that the one class model is the data generating or true model that p-value is extremely small so that the null hypothesis can be rejected. So that in other words, the one class model is rejected in favor of the two class solution here because this p-value for the likelihood ratio difference test is extremely small. You can see also that we get the log likelihood value for the one class solution here. We get two times the log likelihood difference. So that is our empirical chi-square difference value or likelihood ratio difference value. The difference in the number of parameters is three. So that's our degrees of freedom for the difference test. And then that's the p-value. That's what the main thing that we look at here to make a decision about one versus two classes. So in summary, this shows us that the two class solution fits significantly better than the one class solution according to this bootstrap likelihood ratio test. Now, of course, the next thing that we would typically do is we would also look at the three class model to see if the three class model is maybe still better than the two class model. And I prepared that here as well. So now I'm doing the exact same thing for a three class solution. So it's the exact same specification. The only thing that's different here in the syntax is that now I specified classes equals C3. And so now we can take a look at the output for the bootstrap test again to see whether three classes is still better than two classes. So let's scroll down all the way again to our bootstrap output. And you can see here that again we requested 500 bootstrap draws, 500 were completed, no warning message, seems fine. And you can see here that now we're testing two classes against three classes. Now the two class model is the true model, so say under the null hypothesis. And we want to see whether that uh, can be rejected, so to say, in favor of three classes. But you can see here that 
um, the p-value is not significant for that difference in likelihood ratio values between the two class model and the three class model and this shows that the three class model does not fit significantly better than the two class model so it's not necessary according to this test to extract a third class two classes would be sufficient so that would be the conclusion here when you find a non-significant p-value so a significant p-value means that you should extract an additional class so when we compared one class the one class model to a two class model the p-value was significant and so that showed that then two classes was better now the p-value for two versus three classes is non-significant so that means we would not extract three classes but we would um, retain only two classes that's so say how this test works now that's one possibility for determining the number of classes in mixture modeling it's one test that works well another option is to compare the bic information criteria values between models with different numbers of classes and that is also sometimes used as a criterion for model selection in latent class analysis latent profile analysis and other mixture models i hope you found this video useful to learn more about the bootstrap likelihood ratio test in mixture modeling in m plus if you did then please subscribe to this channel hit the like button and don't forget to check out the description for additional workshops and free videos and other resources. And I'll see you next time.